Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nastasha. If you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram if you haven't done so as well. For today's video, I'm sharing with you guys some Ikea hacks, and these may be my favorite Ikea hacks I've ever done on this channel. So I really hope you guys enjoy today's video. As always, if you do, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and without further ado, we can just jump right into it. For this first IKEA hack, you're gonna wanna head straight over to your local hardware store. I got super lucky and mine actually already had the exact size of wood we need for this project and it was pre-cut. So I'll definitely link this down below in hopes that you guys can actually get the same piece as well. These are in an area and they're actually made for bookshelves specifically. We're putting our own twist on a bookshelf for this IKEA hack. And when I got home, I just went ahead and prepped the area. So I put down a drop cloth and I actually leaned the piece of wood against a wall. I felt like it would be much easier to paint this way, but I did put a cardboard behind it just to kind of protect in case there was any paint splatter. So we are gonna start the painting process now. I'm using one of my favorite paint brushes. I will definitely have this exact one linked below. You guys always love it when I show these. They have like the edge on them. They're just so much easier to paint with, especially you'll see this project has a few edges to it and it's just so much easier to use. So I went ahead and chose a black paint. Obviously you can choose whatever color you want. Um, I just wanted it to match the actual ledges that we're using for this DIY. But all you're gonna do is start off by painting one coat of this paint on to your wood piece. After you're done applying your first layer of paint, your wood piece is gonna look a little something like this. We're gonna go ahead and let that dry for about 30 minutes. The paint does dry rather quickly. Just make sure it's dry to the touch before you go ahead and apply your second coat. You may find that this wood has a few imperfections. Just make sure when you add the second coat that you've gone ahead and gone over those quite well so they are covered. After we let that dry, we're moving on to the back. Yes, I do suggest painting the back. However, I only suggest painting the back with one coat of paint you're not really gonna see it and you don't want to really waste paint that you don't need to use so as long as you add a nice layer you should be able to get away with just one coat of paint after I let that dry I went ahead and laid it down flat onto my drop cloth now we are going to take a measuring tape and I thought of this idea and it was so easy so I just laid a measuring tape alongside the entire wood piece this is going to make this project so simple. I'm so happy I thought of this. So basically, once you have that next to the actual wood board, you know exactly where you want your picture ledges to go. Now, what I did, and if you want yours to look exactly like mine, I'm using the measurement of 16 inches. So each of these picture ledges is 16 inches, starting from the top, the bottom, the last one under it is not gonna have 16 inches, but it looks really good. So I just went ahead and laid everything out where I wanted it to go before I went in head and glued everything down just to make sure everything was in the right place and it wasn't crooked. So now we are going in with my favorite wood glue. I love this stuff. It is perfect. It dries quickly and it's super strong. So I would highly recommend using this for this project. So basically what I did was I just kind of moved the ledge down a little bit. I added one layer of this wood glue and I just did it across. Keep in mind, less is more with this glue. It's super strong, so you don't need a huge thick layer of it. And after I did that, I just went back ahead and added the picture ledge back on top of the glue. And because the tape measure is right next to the project and the board, I can see that I'm placing it in the right measurement space and you just wanna go ahead and make sure it's nice and straight. So I just went ahead and repeated this process for all of the picture ledges. Another tip that I have is sometimes the glue might come out of the edge a little bit when you're gluing it down. If that happens, all I recommend doing is keeping either a wet paper towel or a wet rag handy and you can kind of just wipe off the excess. Don't worry about the water. The water actually will not affect the paint in any way. So just kind of went in and like rubbed it off. It doesn't dry white either, so you won't really notice any of the excess glue. After I let it dry, this is the finished product. I am so in love with this new bookshelf. To me, it looks really unique. Just a fun little twist on Ikea's picture ledges I thought this was really nice and I had a lot of fun styling it so I wanted to share that piece with you guys 
All right, now we are moving on to the next IKEA hack using this IKEA lamp. This IKEA lamp has been my favorite ever since I got it, but it's always been a little bit too modern for me. More recently, I saw a designer lamp, so I was inspired to make this IKEA hack, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So I started off by removing the little glass bulbs from it. You want to make sure you do this so you don't break them in this project. And then next, you definitely want to make sure that you cover the cord. The cord is actually a black cloth, so we don't want to get it dirty. So I just went ahead and wrapped it up in a little bit of masking tape. Next, we're going to be using some leftover paper from all of the packages that I get. I knew I would find a great way to use this paper. So all you're going to need is like some packing paper. You can use craft paper, whatever you want. And what you're going to do is just kind of fold it up into layers. And we're just kind of using this as like a mold or like a cast of where we're going to be putting the clay a little bit later. So basically, I am going for a specific shape. As I mentioned, I was inspired by this designer lamp that I saw. So I know exactly what shape I want to make. But the cool thing about this project is you really could create any shape you wanted around these little metal posts. You could even make like a little animal, so many different things with this, but I'm just going for this shape, as I mentioned, to make it look kind of similar to that designer lamp. So all I did was just wrap the different paper around it, and then I'm securing it with some masking tape. And this is honestly so simple. This didn't take much time. You just wanna go through and just kind of make sure that all of that paper is super secure. That's my biggest tip here. So you might wanna use a little bit extra tape just to make sure everything is nice and in place. So I just went ahead and continued to wrap all of that around until I achieved my desired shape for this. Make sure you pack the middle too, just because you want it to be somewhat sturdy. So I recommend doing a few different layers here. That way, once we add the clay, nothing starts to sink in. All right, so once I was done with that step, this is what the lamp looks like. And now we are ready to start adding the clay to it. So I just recommend having something to kind of cover your space with, as well as we are using this air dry clay, which worked really well for this project. I would definitely recommend it. All right, now we're gonna start by taking the clay and we're just gonna kind of roll it in between our hands, making these little strips. Again, this part is fun and it doesn't need to be super perfect either. So all you're going to do is use those little strips that you created and start wrapping them around that little mold that you made on the actual lamp itself. Again, I'm telling you that this part does not need to be perfect. All you wanna focus on in this part is making sure that there are no gaps and that you're adding a thick enough layer Layer of the clay. You can kind of use your fingers to just smooth everything around and just make sure that each piece that you put on is nice and connected. And you're basically going to repeat the same process throughout the whole lamp. Just wanted to share with you guys a close up here of the process just so you guys can get a better look at what I'm doing. As you can see, there are still some imperfections. You don't have to worry about those right now. Those will be fixed in the last step. The main thing you want to do is make sure you're covering all that paper and tape because we don't want any gaps or holes when we're doing that again this process is actually super simple you just want to add everything in make sure everything is nice and molded together and then after i did that i just wanted to make sure that the bottom was very attached so make sure that the bottom layer has enough and just kind of go in as you saw there i kind of pushed it in with my fingernail that's the main piece that you want to make sure is attached to the actual base of the lamp but after that was all done this is pretty much what you are going to be left with so now we're going to be moving on to the last step so after you are done kind of molding all that clay what you're going to need to grab here is actually a bowl of water the water is going to help you out with the smoothing process now you have two choices here you can either create the lamp like I did. I wanted to put a little bit of a twist on my lamp and I wanted mine to look kind of like stone, almost like concrete. So I wanted it to have a few like imperfections in it. So I didn't smooth it out completely. However, if you want yours to be completely
completely smooth. That is so simple. And you're just going to repeat this process and kind of mold everything in until you get everything super smooth. So the choice is up to you if you want yours to be like a little bit more modern and look exactly like the designer lamp, then you would smooth yours out all the way. I just wanted to put a nice twist on the lamp and I wanted mine to look again a little bit more vintage and like it was like a real stone piece pretty much whatever you want but this process is like so easy and again I just kind of went over everything until I got most of like the creases out but I still left again kind of like those little lumps that would make it look like an actual stone piece after it dried this is what the completed lamp looks like I am so in love with this I really wish I would have done this DIY sooner and I'm thinking about picking up another lamp because you can actually do this same project you can paint it you can use colored clay so many different things so I might do that but I love the way that this turned out. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed those IKEA hacks. As always, everything I use will be linked in the description box down below for you guys to check out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!